friends, hoping that all of you are doing good. Let us go back to the world of container handlers. Today, we will be going through restackers which are used to handle containers in ports or small terminals. I recommend you to watch my previous videos, parts 17 and 18, for better understanding of this subject. There are so many options for handling containers. However, you know a restacker is very efficient and fast option for containers. Some people compare a restacker with forklift, but there are many differences. You know the forklifts are used for the most frequent loading and unloading and they don't offer the same capacity as restacker. Here the construction of the machine is totally different from a forklift and also an empty container handler. The restacker has got a higher lifting capacity compared to a container handler. Normally a typical restacker has 45 times capacity and uh, it can lift 5 containers high. As we have seen last week, an empty container handler has a vertical mast and it can stack containers in a single row. In case of restackers, they have long booms which can stack containers in second and third rows. If you look at the stability of both the machines, a restacker provides better stability. This is because the weight distribution between the two machines are quite different. Since the weight distribution is different, the ground pressure, travel speed and stability are also different. Now, let us see what mainly contribute the weight distribution and stability. You see in case of an empty container handler, the mast is an additional weight in front of the unit. When I say front of the unit, I mean beyond the drive axle. This, this means uh, you need higher counterweight for keeping the machine stable. If you look at the restacker, the boom is behind the drive axle and so you get a better stability in this case. Due to this stability factor, uh, you get a higher travel speed. Normally, we say a restacker is efficient when it is user friendly uh, with sufficient lifting capacity and also lifting speed. You know, the capacity ranges from uh, 35 10 to 60 10. The boom length varies from say 4 meters to 25 meters, sorry, 4 meters to 15 meters, and the speed ranges from 18 to 25 meters, I mean 25 kilometers. So we can say that a restacker has an additional outreach. They have got uh, front stabilizers for uh, better stability of the machine uh, while handling uh, second or third rows. So, restackers can be used for extended reach uh, applications. As you know, restackers can access a second row with a full container and handle uh, lightweight containers in the third row. By using a restacker, you can comfortably move a single container around the work site. You can also transfer between locations on the ground, stacking them high and deep uh, or various transport boards such as uh, tracks or rail wagons. For using a, a restacker, you don't need an assistance of a personnel on ground. The machine is automated and the operator can control the machine uh, sitting in his, in his cabin. As I mentioned last week, the spreader can be fully automatic, semi-automatic or manual uh, depending upon how they are 
operated. Uh, the spreaders have size shifting and rotational features. These features uh, work much better uh, in free stackers when you, when you compare with an empty container handler. Uh, the operator has a joystick control for making size shifting, uh, rotation, uh, spreader extensions, uh, locking and uh, unlocking uh, features. Uh, the operator has a control panel uh, where he gets weight indication and also uh, data collection. You know, there are also telescopic spreaders which can handle 20 feet or 40 feet containers. Uh, there is also an accessory called piggyback. It means there are uh, four amps mounted on the spreader. And you can raise a trailer with a container and uh, put it on a train. You know, restackers are best suited for medium size uh, seaports and uh, small container terminals. You don't have to approach a container at uh, 90 degrees because uh, the spreader have, I mean, the spreader can be rotated. E stacker. Uh, I mean, restackers have low profile, so it can pass through uh, low doorways. If you take the case of an empty container handler, you need higher doorways. And uh, if there are any electric cables, you can't use them. Uh, in case of a restacker, you can lift the container at height and travel uh, because of its uh, better stability. If you look at uh, an empty container handler, you need to lower the container so that the driver can uh, see the bottom of the container uh, at his eye level. Uh, if you look at the commercial side, restackers are expensive than an empty container handler. Restackers have more operational parts such as boom, a uh, hydraulic motor, a uh, gear mechanism to rotate. You know, you need to spend uh, for proper maintenance. Anyway, if you compare with gantry cranes and uh, strand carriers, restackers are cheaper and better alternatives. You know, this is because it can operate uh, in narrow spaces and also ensure uh, better visibility to the operator. How can you decide out of the two options which one will work the best for your operation? I mean between restacker and empty container handler. You see, both the machines offer several benefits. If you use a restacker, you can stack high and deep and your storage efficiency will be increased. At the same time, you will be increasing the storage density and therefore it affects the selectivity. If you have listened to my talk last week, I, ha I have explained selectivity and restacking and so I don't repeat it. Once the restacking operations increases, you will be doing extra job. Uh, you know the load, I mean the load center increases as we move on to second or third rows. Then the residual capacity of the stacker decreases. The residual capacity has a significant role in loading and which I have already explained in my previous talks. So I think it's understandable. You need to ensure that you have a restacker with sufficient capacity and load center at second and third rows. Uh, in a 40 feet, 45 ton restacker, which is standard, you can have stacking on five heights on the first row, five on the second row, and four on the third row uh, in case of standard containers, I mean eight six. In case of high cube containers, you can have five, four, and three respectively on first, second, and third rows. 
That's the case of 96 containers. If you look at the ailbits, both the machines can operate almost in the same ailbits. In case you need to lift higher loads in the second or third rows, you need a higher capacity machine and naturally that will increase your ailbits. For more information on ailbits, please go through my previous videos. Uh, in wrist tackles, there are four wheels at front and two wheels on rear. In most wrist tackles, uh, the wheel base is kept minimum in order to reduce the turning radius. Once you reduce the turning radius, you get higher maneuverability. So, it is important to identify the application and uh, consider which machine can uh, add benefit to the operation. This is an area where I can help you uh, on your decision making process. I hope that you have enjoyed this video and please share with me your thoughts. God willing, we will be meeting soon with the next part. Until then, goodbye.